Hey, my dear friends and students, this is Arunachalam Ramachandran for Sairam Academy. We might be having a lot of research in our hand, we don't know how to validate the research or we may not be in a position to answer which is saying the correct answer and which can be generalized to our clinical practice, which we have to adopt and which we have to ignore. So that is what we are going to see in this session, which is the sixth session of the evidence-based practice, internal and external validity of a research work. Okay, to start up with, I will explain to you in a simple language and simple example for uh, what is internal validity. A researcher wanted to do a research by giving water and assessing what is the influence of water on the lifespan of the individual. So, he kept uh, five people in a room and he gave them water every day and he told them that I will come back after 80 years to see how well you are progressing, how is your lifespan. Unfortunately, after 8 years when he came, nobody was alive. So, this study concluded that water was deadly. Is this true? Is this possible? Now, this study do not have a proper internal validity. If you see here, my dear friends, there are two variables, the dependent variable and the independent variable. The dependent variable is the lifespan and the independent variable is the drinking water. So, here what is dependent and independent means? There are only one influence that can influence the dependent variable and that is nothing other than the independent variable. But if there are some other factors that can also influence the dependent variable, then they are called as the confounding variable. Here the confounding variable was these people were not given any food to live. So because of the lack of food, these people dry, died and it was not because of drinking a glass of water. So, how we can define this internal validity, the extent to which you are able to say that no other variable apart from the independent variable causes a change in the dependent variable that is called as the internal validity and also remember the duration of the research which was used here was too extensive. So, that also might have influenced the lifespan of the people so they might have died. How to evaluate a study whether it is having good internal validity or not? is randomization which is a very important procedure in research which can increase the internal validity of a study. There are two types of randomization involved in a good study that is selecting samples from the population. As you know population is the entire lot if I am going to do a study on low back pain all the patients who are there in Chennai are my population and I cannot access to all the members of this low back pain in Chennai. So what I am going to do is I am going to draw some samples from these people and I am going to use them for my study. So when I am doing in that way, I should select them randomly. I should not select people whom I think will do better or in terms of prognosis will do better and say that I involved these subjects into my study and I have tested my uh, intervention to be effective. So, then you may go wrong. The internal validity will be very weak here. So, what I have to do is I have to select randomly samples from my population. This most of the time in physical therapy setup do not happens because we always go for a consecutive sampling. Whoever walked into my clinic, I, I just saw their inclusion exclusion criteria. If they fulfill that, I drafted them into my study. This is a consecutive sampling which is a convenient method of sampling which will not reveal the true population behavior. So, you have to go for a random sampling that is selecting samples from the population. The next very important thing you have to look into is how you are allocating the selected samples into various groups. You may have two or more groups sometimes. So, in that scenario, how you are going to allot these patients into these groups matters a lot. As a researcher, if I am going to prove my intervention to be effective, I will select all the patients who are doing better or I expect them to do better and I will put them in a inter in intervention group and in the control group I will keep all the patients who are not going to perform well, who do not have proper scope in improvement and then finally I should not say that my intervention was effective because I have not randomly allocated my samples. I have done it in my own convenience. So, in this scenario I should go for a randomization where there is a probability of every candidate to go into either of these two groups, control group or the investigation group. So, the randomization to should happen in two levels for a complete randomization and to increase the validity, particularly the internal validity of the study. So, there is no researcher's bias involved in this. So, concealment 
method you might have heard about concealed cover or concealed allocation. So this is a very important procedure which is used to prevent the researcher's bias. Assessor or the researcher will not be knowing to which group the patient is going to go until the allocation takes place. It will be concealed. It will be uh, not shown to the researcher or the investigator unless the time comes when he is going to allot the patient to the two groups. So it may be done with a concealed cover method or it can be used uh, using a symbolic uh, like a striker or badges or something like that which can the meaning for which can be revealed later on. Okay, the uh, person who is allotting these patients uh, will come to know about what the green color striker refers to or a red color striker refer to only at the time of allocation. This is called as concealment of allocation method. Even though the study has been uh, employing randomization, you have to see whether they have used a concealment of allocation to groups which is very important to prevent the bias and to increase the internal validity. Blinding is a very important procedure which every researcher should know and would have heard already of. There are two types of blinding. Before that you should know what is blinding. If I am unaware of what I am doing or what I am undergoing then the situation is called as blind. So single blinded studies are the studies in which the subjects are blinded. They don't know what treatment they are undergoing for what they are undergoing. The purpose will not be told to them or the other way researcher will be blinded. In case of physiotherapy interventions you cannot blind a patient from doing some exercises or undergoing some physical modalities because they will obviously so they know what they are undergoing so it's sometimes it becomes little challenging or in a given area if you are doing in a clinical setup when people are practicing together I don't think it is possible for people to blind so in that case what uh, normally people do is for a single blinded study they blind the researcher that is the primary researcher will not be blinded practically for the subjects but the, he can employ an assessor who is just to assess the outcome measures he has to administer the outcome measures on the patients and he has to report back to the primary researcher where he don't know whether he is testing on group A subjects or group B subjects that will not be revealed to him his job is only to employ the outcome measures and report it back to the primary researcher so this is a form of single blinded study in case if the researcher want to increase the internal validity to the maximum what he does is he goes for a double blinded study where he will include a a person who is blinded to the study as an assessor and he will also blind his subjects towards his study intervention. Next is the dropouts which is the most ignored part of uh, the studies that is whether to give account for the dropouts or not. Before going into this we should know what are dropouts. Dropouts are the subjects who do not complete the entire course of the intervention. They may drop out in between because of various reasons. So the reason for what they have been dropped out is very important. So uh, there is a procedure called intention to treat analysis where even the dropped out subjects will also be given a statistical account they should also account for it because sometimes the patients might have got worsened with their particular treatment and they might have been dropped out for further uh, medical attention so these patients should also be accounted because they will definitely give a clear picture about the intervention quality or on the other hand also patients might have recovered soon from an intervention they might have left the intervention on half the way if they are not included in the study the efficacy of this intervention will not give a clear picture to the reader so the people who are being dropped out should also be given equal attention like the people who have completed the entire course so analysis of dropouts and giving an account of intention to treat analysis is a very important thing you cannot ignore dropouts in most of the scenarios now I have two groups I have done randomization concealed method double blinded approach and also I am going to account for the dropouts but how I am going to treat my two groups group A and group B are there and group B is my favorite group and if I compare my group with 
are no intervention group then I am not treating the groups equally then that is biased if I'm going to give one intervention for group B and two interventions for group B then also I am biased if I'm going to give two times treatment in a day for group B and only one time a day intervention for group A then also I am biased if I am going to give an extended duration of intervention for group B or I am going to give an intervention which, which is outdated for the other group and comparing my intervention with that then also I am biased so how you are going to treat the two groups equally matters a lot equally in the sense the treatment quality the duration of treatment the people who are treating the patients for example sometimes the primary researcher will say I have treated the group B and somebody else has treated the group A so in case if that is somebody else you have to mention how much qualified that person was he might be an amateur who is treating patients for the first time then you cannot equate these two groups so everything matters here the next important thing is analyzing the study results out of all the internal validity this is a very important stage where we are going to analyze what the study really says about the intervention in my early days I directly go to the conclusion after studying the objective of the study and see what the study has said whether it is saying the intervention to be effective or not that matters for me a lot but later on as matured person I started seeing various things the first thing I see is how effective it was in terms of group A and group B results that is within group analysis that is the pre-test value of the group and the post-test value of the same group how much difference it was if there is a good difference between these two then I'll say the patients in the group A have progressed and in comparison to group B how they have progressed that is between group analysis if the difference between the pre-test value and post-test value of group A is more than the difference between the post-test and pre-test value of group B then I'll say the patients of group A have progressed very well this is one way of looking into it the next very important thing here is which I have missed out is whether the groups were similar at the time of assignment which can be checked by comparing the pretest values of both the groups whether there was any significant difference or not if there was no significant difference between these two groups it is said that both the groups were similar at the time of recruitment next important thing for uh, is the long-term prognosis okay the group A was effective but how long the improvement has sustained whether the study has gone through the long-term outcome of the intervention or not if the study has included a long-term outcome or the prognosis then the internal validity is good and the very important thing third is how long it took for the intervention for example group A and group B would, would have been there repeated measures will give you an analysis how sooner the improvement has happened in these two groups instead of going for pre and post test analysis pre test value and post test values can be more for example if I'm doing a study to find the effectiveness of an exercise which I have devised for low back pain I give a pre test battery then the patients are undergoing for a four weeks of intervention I'm going to give after one week an outcome measure second week third week and finally fourth week so I will have one pretest and four post test so why I go for such an analysis is to analyze whether my intervention has resulted in a faster recovery in the pain management or in the functional recovery of the patient compared to the other group so this gives the rate of improvement so these three things are very important considerations for me when I'm analyzing the study results now I'm going to explain about the external validity with a very simple and practical example a girl was sitting in a park she saw a guy who was walking nearby and she fell in love with this guy she wanted to know how to attract this person so what she did she wanted to do a survey on how to attract people so what she did when she walked through the park she saw some people playing on the ground and she stopped by and asked these people hey guys I really want to know how to attract a guy the moment she asked this question a boy who was playing there came out answering that you have to shout loud at that person the second boy said 
I normally used to wear my Superman dress to attract people. The third one said you, a food substance will help you, probably a chips will help you. So taking these three tips she went and sat in the place and expected the same guy arrived and she started yelling out saying that she's interested and along with that she was also having a food stuff. So what happened? This guy ran away. So why I am saying this thing is when you do a survey you have to target the exact population to do the survey otherwise you will lose your external validity which is nothing but the extent to which your study results can be generalized to a population. Here she should have not gone with small boys she should have gone with the adult people to do her survey. So what matters here is a good sample. A good sample is a key for a good external validity and sample should be an exact representative of the population if not then it the results you conclude from the given sample will definitely go wrong it will not give you a clear picture about the population the sample should be representative of the wider population and they should be in sufficient numbers for example if I am doing a study on low back pain of college students it should not only be from a selected college it should be a sample of subjects from various colleges in and around the city then only I can generalize my results then the sample should be sufficiently large in proportion to the population and the last important thing is my exclusion criteria should not be so stringent so I exclude almost all my patients and come up with a small sample Okay guys, to complete this session, I would give you a practical example where we lose our external validity. A study title, Effectiveness of Physiotherapy in Management of Low Back Pain in School Teachers. The conclusion, exercise was very effective in treating school teachers. Then if you go into the study, you see that the samples were selected from one particular school or two schools and they would have given this results but I'm very sorry this cannot be generalized to the entire population you should have gone with more number of schools uh, types of teachers who are involved in different experience and different age groups to say that exercise is very effective in school teachers so I think I have given you a clear picture about the internal and external validity which you have to look into every study you are going through to say this results is valid Thank you and see you again in another topic.